Hello fellow watch enthusiasts, it's my pleasure to be here at the first ever Red Bar Naples virtual event after an extended hiatus due to COVID. We are thrilled to be here in the Rolex Boutique at Bingham Jewelers. I'm Kyle Moran, head watch enthusiast of Red Bar Naples, and our special guest for this evening, although we're really their guest, <laughs> are Jenna and Dan Kelly, who along with their sister and sister-in-law, Kathy Bingham, run the Rolex Boutique at Bingham's Jewelers. So happy to have everybody here. We're just excited to bring you some watches. It's been a long time since we've all gotten together. So even though this is virtual, we're very excited to be here. And we're recording this so you can watch it from the comfort of your own living room. And we're really here to talk Rolex and to talk about watches. Before we do, let's talk a little bit about uh, Bigums, how you started this in Naples and, and how you became affiliated with Rolex. So to start, this is our 26th year in business. Family That's business, great. one location. Dan and his sister started it, and I'll kind of let you take the lead about how Rolex got involved. Well, um, we had just started our business, and we were open about a year, and we thought that it would be great to have the Rolex line, and we decided one day we're just gonna write a letter to Rolex, see what we can find out about availability, and a month later, we got a knock at the door, and it was the um, area sales manager showed up and gave us an opportunity. And uh, that was a pretty good letter to write. <laughs> <laughs> but back then, it was like they, you know, it was a new jewelry store. It was they wanted to have the Rolex line. It was a yeah. huge investment for a small sure. family business starting off. It was what? Uh, well. Today it's quite a bit. It was a but very back small back then, investment. yeah, it was it was small, yeah, it but it was, was big to them at that time. Sure. And he said, yeah. he told Dan, it was a big sacrifice, right? Yeah. And, yeah. We didn't have money. We we're just starting out, and we thought, man, how are we going to come up with all this money? <laughs> <laughs> and right. uh, the Rolex rep said, don't worry, I'm going to send you watches. You'll sell them all in 30 days, and you'll want to reorder them. Don't worry about it. And he was right. I love it. That's yeah. great. And we have a fantastic watch. We have a lot of watches here, by the way. I mean, a crazy amount of watches. We're going to get into it. We're going to get into GMTs. We're going to get into subs. We're going to get into Submariners. Maybe some Explorers. Who the heck knows? Yeah. But what can you, Jenna, can you describe the watch that we're looking at? at the I moment? mean, first, stay tuned. Because this is the beginning of many spectacular yes. things we're about to show you. The benefit of us doing this in the privacy of the boutique after hours is that we get to show you some really exclusive special merchandise that we would normally not be able to bring out of the store for insurance purposes. So we are going to start with the 40 millimeter rose gold GMT, also referred to as the root beer with the two-tone bezel. I'll give you guys a little fact about this watch. There is one woman in Rolex that can actually do these bezels to make them by color. I love it. So that's, that is uh, a watch for these times. And this is uh, Cerachrome, which is Rolex zone proprietary ceramic. And those are all, the, each of those numerals is filled with what type of material? Also rose gold? And platinum. Platinum Rose gold dust. and platinum. I love these things. And by the way, I'm going to... Yes. Well, well, first of all, let me put on my Anyone official, who, yes, please. My official uh, Rolex Boutique glove, and I am going to turn your bezel because I love these. These turn 24 times, one click per hour, which we'll see later we've, is very different than the Submariner. Um, this, you know, our incredible photographer is holding up the microphone now, but these happen to be quiet bezels. Yes. Where the Submariner has the distinctive two uh, clicks uh, per minute around the uh, around the dial. So that's great. So we have any other... So Cerachrome, just quickly to yeah. play off that, is what I talk to people about. It's bulletproof. Okay? So... Previous to this, it was aluminum. So you're saying it's like a personal safety device. Yes, exactly. So if someone, you know, 
<laughs> if we you're in, in danger, in odd times. <laughs> if you're in danger, girl, hold up your bezel. <laughs> You'll be okay. <laughs> no, but I will tell you, uh, previously they were aluminum, so you will see scratching, fading, different things happen to the bezel. They actually go through a shrinking process. So when they start with the bezel, it's quite large, and then it shrinks down almost like a piece of pottery, and then they have the platinum dust. Um, for the numerals, but it will not scratch, it will not bend, it will not nick. It's, you know, I have construction workers that wear this watch. Right. I mean, no, it, it is, is a beautiful watch. Yeah. And for people that don't know too, what we're dealing with here is effectively two hour hands. So we have this, this hour hand with uh, the big triangle that is pointing to the second time zone. And then we have the more narrow hour hand that's, that's pointing to the primary time zone. But to get back to the bezels, Dan, I think you have an example of a root beer that is sort of the father or grandfather to this one Correct. that has the uh, the original aluminum bezel. And yeah. this this also happens to be a two tone. That's a full gold. This is a, a a a yellow gold steel with a different bracelet. What is that bracelet called? It's called the Jubilee bracelet. So this is stainless steel and yellow gold, and this is what they refer to as a nipple dial. Dan, you can go to a little so bit. So this is interesting. What you what you mentioned, you're jumping the gun on us, Sorry. Dana, mm -hmm. Because here we still have the small oh. outdoor swimming pools, the above ground swimming pools for the hour markers, right? Where we have the little bit of of gold surround yes. with the luminous material inside. But you have uh, f foreshadowed what I did. Dan what had And uh, this is a special watch because it's my birth year. I will just say that. Mm -hmm. 1981. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kyle. <laughs> right. So this is, so you can see what she means by nipple dial. And correct me if I'm wrong here, but this is like a little volcano with the top chopped off. And the luminous material is filling that uh, raised area, uh, or, or, or is filling the center. And you see the raised area uh, sloping to the sides of the gold material, as opposed to the former watch where we have these effectively outdoor above ground uh, swimming pools where you have the perfect circle raised up filled with luminous material but this is let's go let's go back to this nipple dial for a second because this is also in a two-tone but, but this is so we have uh, the GMT where they've accentuated this burnt what would you call it Dan burnt orange color it is yeah. it's like a rust yeah. color I mean, I think you know, this is the Clint Eastwood watch. Yeah. yeah. So Clint Eastwood made this watch famous in the 70s by wearing it in his Dirty Harry movies. And I believe, is that right? Yeah. There's yes. no one cooler than Clint Eastwood. I don't think anyone is cooler than Dirty Harry. Not on a movie star level. There are some examples of people that have lived daring lives of service. And I think Dan has an interesting watch I think is going to show really well with a cool bezel. Dan, can you tell us a yes. bit about what we're looking at now? So this is a model 1675 GMT uh, circa 1968. Uh, this watch uh, belonged to a paratrooper and he wore this watch uh, for over 100 jumps in multiple countries. No um, kidding. Yeah. No, in, wow, and service the United States. How does this so this bezel originally started as blue and red. red. Yep. And what we're looking at now is gray and a purple, a fuchsia. Right? Yeah, we yeah. call it blueberry. So they do. They have all different kinds of names for when the the bezel on a GMT fades. Yeah. It was much like this when it was new. This color. So that's wild. The fact that this so that this turned to that. And there you go again with the uh, hour indices. So you can see here that we're looking again at the white gold surround. So this is a, what year is this watch? Uh, 98. 1998. So this is, a, this is a 98. So this is 30 years younger than this watch. And this watch has the matte dial where the uh, luminous material is painted on right on top of a otherwise a matte dial, Correct. right? With no gold surrounds. And this watch is in excellent condition, but with a perfectly faded bezel, which, which you I mean, know, that is increases really its cool watch. value. Also, just keep in mind, this watch not only had one owner, but also comes with the jump logs for every single jump that this paratrooper did. Well, that's a cool one. So that, that watch has a backstory and is also in phenomenal con condition with a cool uh, bezel. And one owner, box, papers, jump log, 
He also did the auction for... The first auction <clears throat> for the U.S. Mint. They auctioned off gold for the government. And he is actually on the front page of the newspaper uh, during the auction wearing this watch. He has this picture. So that has incredible yeah. prominence. Too. Well, it's not only rare to actually have what's considered a blueberry faded bezel, but to have one owner box papers, all of the jump logs for a paratrooper and the newspaper article for when the auction was for right. the U.S. Mint. That is a cool it, watch. It is an incredible watch with an incredible history behind it. In all original, original rivet band. All right, next bands. GMT. What else do we have okay. in the mm -hmm. G in GMT land? Because I have, I have. Uh, well, wait a second. So you have two blue and blacks, which I am, which I am partial to. Tell us a little bit about. Well, this is actually my personal watch. I will tell you, this is what I consider new old stock. Wait, I, you're saying it's your personal watch, and you're wearing two other watches? I am wearing two other watches. We, right. These will be so revealed at your the eyes. end. Avert your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> This is my personal watch, so this is actually what was considered the original Batman. So this has the Cerachrome bezel, blue and black, oyster bracelet, yeah. steel. Last year, Basel World, the last Basel World, which we had just found out, came out this watch. This is what people refer to also as the Batgirl. Any steel GMT from Basel World on had a Jubilee bracelet. It used to be the oyster bracelet. Yeah. Now it comes on Jubilee. So any steel GMT they introduced at Basel World last year, which was the last Basel World Jubilee bracelet for the steel. You have a steel Pepsi. Yes. That's right. Yep. Oh, man. Well, that was a personal watch, right? So that's okay. It's fine. You're allowed, you're allowed <laughs> to do that. Table. This is the steel GMT Pepsi that was released cool at Basel watch. World yeah. last year with the Jubilee bracelet. This is when everything changed. And white gold GMTs are now only available on the Oyster bracelet. You know, but this is a different dial too. It's a blue dial. It's a navy dial. So that's a, that's a really cool little uh, feature. I mean, this black dial is great, but you know, the blue dial is, is killer good. It's rich. It's a white gold watch. It has heft to it. It's robust. It has the right. navy dial. You can feel it too. You can feel the extra weight of it. I don't mean to vibrate that for you, Nick, but but that has it's significant extra weight to it, right? So you mentioned Basel World for many decades, probably generations. Rolex and others use Basel World as their annual coming out party for each year's set up of watches it is pomp and circumstance it is the biggest event of the year everyone waits for right. it all year the new releases it is everybody is and sadly yes while you're using present tense we must now use past tense because basil world is no longer paddock and rolex pulled out of basil world with the intention of now transferring to Watch and Wonders in Geneva. So for those of you who don't know about Basel World, maybe you can give us a little bit of sense of exactly what it is. Well, as a, as a retailer, as an authorized Rolex dealer, Basel World is where all every year Rolex comes out with their new watches. People wait with bated breath about what is Rolex going to come out with next? What's happening? And all of that anticipation comes to fruition at Basel World. That's right. So as a enthusiast of the watch world, I will will wait late at night for the announcements of what they had, but I've never been there. And you've been there. And this is, I believe, although we'll never see it again, I don't think, this was really the foremost watch expo. I mean, this is like the full... 8, 10, 12 ring circus. It's of what we the wait watch for every year. It what is. was it like though? Tell us a little bit about you've got obviously Rolex a big part of it and others like Paddock and the and the legendary watchmakers of the world, but there are hundreds, if not thousands, of watch vendors that are there. We have as a jewelry store, you know, we have vendors that participate in Basel World. Yeah. But we go specifically for Rolex. Sure. It is where they release everything. We go, we meet with the heads of Rolex, all of the new releases. 
people don't think about it. They think about the new sports models that are being released, but there are also new dials that are released for 36 millimeter date just. All of the sure, new, all everything details, new, yeah. new movements, new everything is released there. We sit down, we meet with them, and we place our order for the year. It is the biggest event for an authorized Rolex dealer by far every year. And for it to be canceled this past year, it it was a major undertaking. Well, this is a big part of how the world has changed as a result of coronavirus. And maybe Basel World was an endangered species to begin with. It was. But this mm -hmm. has expedited things far beyond our far beyond my expectations and I would imagine your expectations. Absolutely. I mean, we are told as of September one that they're going to have a limited release of things, of new watches that are going to be released as of September 1. But will that be on September the yes, 1st? Yes, it, it will be September 1st. And by limited release, you're talking about one, two, three... We don't know exactly. What we're told is it's going to be existing models with new movements, and then they're going to save completely new watches or re-changed watches uh, ex for... 2021. ...and whatnot for uh, spring. So, you know, that's a fascinating topic because that's, this is a beautiful GMT uh, uh, watch, but let's put this aside for a second, and let's bring out perhaps a great Samariner that we have over there. What about the Smurf that you have in the case? Or perhaps a 5513, whichever you're most inclined to. So, Janet, tell us for one moment about this watch. So this is a white gold Submariner. The white gold Submariner comes in one configuration, and this is it. That's it. It is referred to as, this, as the Smurf. That's also the only blue Submariner. Only. They, yeah. There is a steel and gold blue Submariner, okay? But as far as it being all that white, shade of blue that shade of blue to white gold. is exclusive to white gold. There's That's been it. a lot of speculation that this watch is going to be discontinued. We do not know that for a fact, but they are very rare. This is the only white gold Submariner that we have seen at Bigham Jewelers Boutique in two years. And That's we amazing. just received it this past week. So if you'd be so kind as to hand us that um, GMT what, in white gold, this watch, if, if we're able to zoom in on the very bottom of the watch, this watch has a crown between the words Swiss and made. And this watch just says Swiss made. So the, the, reason, the reason that it says that is that the GMT has had a movement that's been revised. And the Submariner still has the original movement. The, uh, the movement on the Submariner has never been updated. So I'm going to fill you in here because my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, when it has the crown, that means that this has a 72-hour power reserve. Mm -hmm. And when it lacks the crown, it means that it is the older movement and has a 48-hour power reserve. Correct. So this is two days of power reserve on, mm -hmm. a, on a full wine. Correct. And this is three days of power reserve in a full wine. So it seems to me if they're making this watch that lasts 50% longer than that watch, it's just a matter of time before they bring this watch up to speed. Do you expect that to happen on September 1st? At September 1st, the, it is my prediction with 99% accuracy. <laughs> <laughs> that the Submariner is going to have a new movement. So all of you gentlemen and ladies out there that have a Submariner with the original movement, hold on to your watches. And that that 72-hour uh, power reserve in the new Submariner will come in a steel with blue and an oyster fox? Is that, is, I, is that accurate speculation? No, I mean, we're all speculating at this point, but to be honest, I mean, as a, you know, Rolex lover and Rolex collector, um, I would love to see the Submariner in general on an oyster fox with a glide lock bracelet. Well, that is your preference. <laughs> what is your prediction? 
My prediction is that on September 1st, it's going to be the new movement. I do not predict that Rolex is going to come out with any major new configurations of any watches um, until the new release in 2021. I think that we're going to get all of the new movements on September 1st, and I think they're going to leave it at that. So, Dan, while we're on that note, do you have a current generation Samariner to pull? Yes. So, speaking of the current Submariner, we saw the Smurf, which is the white gold version in blue. Smurf's not an official name, it's a nickname. But this is the quintessential Rolex watch. This is the classic. This is the one launched in the 50s that's been on the wrist of adventurers and executives for decades. We're talking now about today's classic Submariner with a date, with a ceramic bezel, and with a movement that only lasts two days. Yeah. And so this is also in a maxi case, right, Dan? It is. That maxi case refers to the fact that there is a thicker uh, area around each of these two lugs right here is before it meets the bracelet. In other words, it spans out before it meets the bracelet. There's been speculation that uh, either one of two things will happen, that those lugs will be thinned to a more traditional uh, look. And what are you showing us now, Dan? This is the previous case size. So that's the, the previous case size. Case size, okay, great. So you can see there's a big difference here in the lugs. So the lugs, again, are where the case meets the bracelet. You can see all of this horizontal uh, span here and a much tighter meeting of the lugs to the bracelet on uh, this previous watch. There has been speculation that with the next watch coming with a 72 hour power reserve, that either the lugs will be thinned or the case will be increased to reduce the appearance of the lugs. What's your view on what's, what the future <laughs> holds for us? Lots of rumors. My prediction is it stays the same. My prediction as well. I don't think they're going to change it at all. I will tell you that once Rolex has the technology to do a larger power reserve, I don't think that they're going to leave any man behind. So, what, so you think they're going to go from 72 hours to how many hours? No, I mean, I think that the Submariner... Oh, it, right. They're yeah, going to update mm -hmm. the whole set of watches. They're going to update the whole set of watches. I think that they've left the Submariner behind. I think it's tried and true. It's kind of what is a staple for Rolex. So I do not think they're going to change the lugs. I do think that they're going to update the power reserve because, you know, he's been left behind. You know, I let's explore this for a second. And I use that word purposely because I'd like to see an Explorer 2, the current model, if you have it. You're going back, you know, left field over here for us, Dan, I think. But bring, keep these watches out here, uh, Jana, because this, this is another watch that has two features that I'd like to discuss. One, this is a 42 millimeter case as opposed to a 40 millimeter case on the current Submariner. The other aspect is that the lugs, although they may be the same size, because they are coming from a 42 rather than 40 millimeter case, they seem to hug the bracelet a little bit more uniformly. And this is also, as you can tell from the fact that at the bottom of the dial here under the six, it says just Swiss made rather than Swiss crown made. This is just a 48 hour power reserve. Do you think that we are on the verge of getting a new Explorer 2. Uh, of course, my prediction is though, personal prediction, is that These we're are not going to- personal predictions, this per, is all this, this, this yeah. speculative personal prediction that I will not be held to is saying that they're going to say nothing about the Explorer until 2021 because I think there's going to be major changes. Major changes in 2021, but nothing on September 1st. I don't think they're going to do anything on September 21st. I think that they're probably going to change the bezel and the body style on the Explorer. And I think it's all going to happen in 2021 because it's going to be a significant change. I love that, by the way. Dan, do you happen to have what would be the grandfather to this watch? Mm -hmm. the, the original? Do you want plastic? Or do you want... The 40... Let's go, let's go uh, plastic. Sure. 
Let's go way back. So in the 19, right around 1970 and through the 70s, Rolex had in, is this a 39 millimeter case? Yeah. Just under 60 millimeters, they had this crazy watch, almost a very un-Rolex watch with this gradient, this up and down uh, outer track and this crazy uh, orange hand and this massive uh, 12 hour marker. Uh, this is the reference 1655, the very first Explorer II, what they call the Steve McQueen. Also referred to as an albino dial, correct? Uh, so there are multiple dial variants. Do you have an albino in I the... I do. I mean, you can't believe it here at Bingham's because if you can dream it, it can happen. Yes. There is, <laughs> there is maybe <laughs> one of everything. By the way, just a little, a little side note here. The best is yet to come. I mean, yes. we're just we're just getting one. And up. just to say, it's after hours here at Bingham's. After Jewelers. hours at Bingham's. The vault is closed. Mm -hmm. So this is so. You made a great reference, Jenna, because we see full orange here. Yeah. We see a, a partial orange here, and this is a watch from 1979, which Rolex decided to go with a lighter hand, uh, a GMT hand on, or or second time zone hand on, and because they went with the lighter variant, they call this what, Dan? Uh, they nicknamed it an albino. The albino. Now, for a time, for a time, uh, roughly. From uh, 1982, I'm guessing, to 2003, they produced the reference 16550 one, six, and 16570. We're looking at 16570 here. This watch, I believe, is from uh, sometime in the 90s with gold surrounds but in black so you can see the the surrounds here again these are the outdoor raised swimming pools uh they're actually in a gold that's done in black the previous reference was 16550 was done in a white gold which did not have the contrast but this they actually did away with the uh the unique orange hand that you see on these other three variants here. And this is the first generation in, in this model that have a sapphire crystal also. They switched from the acrylic to sapphire, 40 millimeters, and then to the 42. You know what I love to do with when it comes to the sapphire to acrylic? I love to, to give it the fingernail test. Because right now I am about to click on the acrylic. So this is a plastic. You can hear the tick. You can hear that, right? Yeah. And let me go up here because this is a modern, this is in fact this year, and you can see yes. this incredible brushed uh, uh, stainless steel on the bezel. I mean, that really shines through. And you can see how they're related, but different. They've grown up a lot since uh, uh, their 40 year old uh, predecessors. But again, here is Sapphire. Nothing. Silence. Nothing. Silence. Right, and this is—is is this the one that's bulletproof that you're uh, you, yeah, <laughs> recommending as a self-defense mechanism? I'm just saying, no, it's not. But don't drop it on tile floors. It's the only thing it's allergic don't to. Don't drop it on tile floors. Mm -hmm. In the side profile, you can see an acrylic is raised, and versus the sapphire sits very flush. Well, that, I think that's a very good point. So the the sapphire, they're able to get straight across the top. Yeah. But let's just talk a minute about how. We have all of these generations of explorers, which my personal prediction is going to change significantly in 2021. And we are so blessed to be here together. And just next time we are all together, you know, this is going to we'll be. We'll have the next. We'll this the is going to be. We are. We are. And, and we're going to we're going to hang out and we're going to talk watches and we're going to look at all these different generations. And it's going to be actual. This concludes the first of our two-part presentation of Behind the Scenes at Bingham Jewels. Keep watch for the final installment being released soon. Until next time.